Well, welcome. I'm Pastor Mike from here at Good Hope. Glad you're joining us today. It's a blessing to have you with, even though I can't see you, but you can see me. So if you're watching on YouTube, I would love if you would make a comment below uh, so that I can see that you're watching. So thank you again for being with us today. We're going to spend some time in worship. So we've got the worship team ready to go with some songs that have been prepared. So I want you to open Open your heart to the Lord. If you're not someone who wants to sing by themselves in, <laughs> at home while you're watching this, spend some time in prayer. Spend some time connecting with God. Let's just prepare our hearts to receive good things from the Lord today.
we praise your name. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, for your sacrifice that not, not only frees us from our sins, but frees us from the bondage of our past, frees us from health problems, frees us from addictions. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you are and for all that you've done. And we surrender to you today at the foot of the cross. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and
Hey, it's good to worship the Lord. Amen. Well, now's the time in our service where we take our offering and we let people know about Kids Church. So obviously, uh, giving online is something that, that you can do. So if you're watching on YouTube, you hover over here, you'll see a little eye. That'll take you to uh, our online giving. It'll also take you to Kids Church. So kids can go to Kids Church the same way. If that eye doesn't come up for you, then goodhope.ag is where you go for online giving and for Kids Church. So if you're watching on the CW, uh, you can look us up, goodhope.ag. You can watch Kids Church and you can give online. So I'd really appreciate that. Uh, Now it's time for our one-minute blessing. Every service we pray together because when God's people pray, it moves the hand of God and it also changes the heart of the people who pray. So we've got Pastor Corey from our Morgan Park campus here for our one-minute blessing. All right. Well, thank you, Pastor Mike. Again, my name is Pastor Corey and I am the campus pastor in Morgan Park. And today as we get ready to do the one-minute blessing here, something that I wanted to pray about was the school system with the teachers... Uh, and doing everything online now, and the kids and the parents helping out. thought it'd be good to take today as uh, a time to pray for, for all of that. So let's do the one-minute blessing. Father, we just thank you for today. God, we thank you for the school systems that we have for our children. Father, we thank you for the teachers who are teaching our kids and have the heart to do that, Lord. And this morning, we pray for all the teachers, Lord, as they've been for about a month, month and a half now doing uh, distance learning and and figuring out this new learning curve of how to, to teach and doing all this online. And so we thank you for them, Lord. We thank you for them figuring out new ways to teach the kids. And we pray right now for them as they work through this uh, challenge, Lord. And we pray for the kids as well, God. They're at home. They're, they're missing their friends. They're missing their teachers. It's a different way of learning. And so, Father, we just lift up the kids right now and pray that you would just uh, equip them and, and quicken their hearts to learn in this new way. And Lord, we pray for the parents as well. Lord, they're, they're at home and this is a, a new thing for them as well. And, and uh, we just lift them up and pray for patience and we pray for the ability uh, to them to join in with their kids and take this time to help teach them in many different ways. So Father, we thank you for, for all of this. We thank you for uh, the way it's taken place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Corey, for leading us in our one-minute blessing in our time of prayer. We're going to now conclude our series that we're calling Suit Up. We're in part nine of a series going through the full armor of God from Ephesians chapter six. And this is uh, such an important topic, but we're to the end of our series. So uh, I just want to, again, one more time, let you know that you are in a spiritual battle if you know it or not, and you're in a spiritual battle if you want to be or not. But thankfully, God has given those who trust in Him, those who believe in Him, the tools they need to be able to fight the spiritual battle and win. That's described in Ephesians chapter 6, the full armor of God. So let's read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, let's go through this uh, as we've done every single week and really uh, just focus on what it has to say and endeavor to put this into practice. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. 
Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So this is what we've been covering, and today we finish up uh, by talking about praying in the Spirit. Last week, we talked about the sword of the Spirit, and uh, Paul continues on in verse 18, so verse 17 that we did last week, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So, Let's pray for this service, and we will talk about praying in the Spirit. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time that we get to share. Uh, Thank you for digital media, for uh, television broadcasts like the CW. Thank you for um, YouTube. Thank you for all the, you know, the the goodhope.ag, the internet, all those things, Lord. Thank you that we can still connect at this time. Father, I pray that you would bless this moment, that you would help us to truly connect with you, that you would help us to take a step forward in serving you and believing you more. Lord, just going with you. Lord, I know each one that's hearing this has different needs. They're fighting different parts of the battle. There are different obstacles in their way. So Father, I pray that you would meet them right now and give them just what they need. So Lord, bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So the sword of the Spirit, and then pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So here, uh, the Apostle Paul is giving an example of how we pull out the sword of the Spirit. We take the sword of the Spirit and we pray in the Spirit with all kinds of prayers and requests. Praying for all the Lord's people. That's what we're called to do. So this is part of taking up the sword of the Spirit. Now, uh, a book could be written on this topic of uh, praying in the Spirit. You know, prayer is a huge topic. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try to hit some significant points, some uh, hopefully helpful points on prayer. Um, But I just do want to let you know, of course, we're going to miss a whole lot of different things on the subject of praying in the Spirit. But here are some things that I think are very, very important. The first thing that I want you to know is that we are active participants. God has a plan. There's a battle between uh, heaven and hell, between God and the enemy. And there's all these things going on. There's this spiritual battle happening. And we are active participants in this. Um, it's very important that you see yourself as an active participant in life, in the spiritual battle, in all of these things that we read in the scriptures. You are a, an active participant. It seems to me that some Christians don't, they don't understand this. Uh, I was uh, having a nice conversation with some ministry friends of mine, uh, and one of them asked the question, you know, why should we pray? Uh, if God's got a plan, he's going to do what he wants to do, and it's all set, prayer doesn't make any difference, does it? I mean, it's going to happen the way it's going to happen, so why should we even pray? Um, I don't want to get into the theological weeds with that, but I do want to simply say this. According to the scriptures, we are active participants in what is going on. What you do actually makes a difference. What you don't do also makes a difference. When we uh, actively participate, that's when things work the way they're supposed to. So I want to read from James chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Very important uh, few verses on prayer. So James 5, starting in verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, 
and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. So what's the point of James 5, 16 through 18? The point is that when we pray, it makes a difference. Now, there's various different details with that. The prayer of a righteous man. So we want to get connected with God. We want to live consistently with God. Uh, We want to live right before God. Then we know that we can pray and it can be uh, powerful and effective. But James brings up Elijah with the specific point of he was just a person. You're just a person. I'm just a person. Elijah was just a person. And his prayers were powerful and effective. Our prayers can be powerful and effective. We are active participants in what's going on. The people uh, whose exploits are recorded in the scriptures understood that they were active participants. You and I are active participants. Let's play our role. Let's do our part. And one of those main parts that we play is to pray. We pray, pray in the Spirit with all kinds of prayers and requests, praying for all the Lord's people. There's so many times in the Scriptures we're commanded to pray for different groups, praying for our leaders, uh, praying for our enemies, those who persecute us. We are called to pray, and the reason we're called to pray is because we are active participants, and it makes a difference. So, hope you got that one. Very important. You are an active participant. My next point is to talk about what is praying in the Spirit. What does that mean? Uh, If we're going to pray in the Spirit, uh, how do we pray in the Spirit? You know, last week we talked about uh, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we talked about reading your Bible and how people can read the Bible or look at the Scriptures kind of in the wrong way. They can look at the Scriptures as trivia. You know, you're learning trivia so you can answer Uh, quiz questions or that sort of thing, or uh, as kind of a ritual. Well, I I read my Bible today and I've done that every day, so now I must have earned God's favor, you know, some sort of a, a ritualistic deal with it. But we're supposed to look at the Bible as the the Word of God that we can bring as a sword to change this world, to do our part, be actively participate and go to battle. And, the, uh, and prayer is a lot like that too. Uh, praying in the Spirit is not your check-the-box kind of prayer. Well, I'm supposed to pray. It's time to eat. Somebody should pray because there's you know, other people here and we need to make sure that we pray when there's people around. So uh, you give some meal prayer or that sort of a thing. It isn't the check-the-box sort of prayers, but these are Uh, are prayers that are deeply connected with God and powerful in the Spirit. So I want to read a section from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that talks uh, talks about being in the Spirit, basically. And uh, let's go 1 Corinthians 2, 4 through 16. Here we go. This is the Apostle Paul talking to the church in Corinth. And he is explaining a lot of things and basically uh, he gets into some deeper things here in chapter 2. So chapter 2 verse 4. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him, these are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. 
This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgment about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments, for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So, it's a long section of Scripture, some powerful things in there, but clearly indicating that it's not just about things that we learn and, you know, the stuff we've been taught, but about connecting with the Holy Spirit of God, being led by the Spirit of God, discerning things of the Spirit through this connection with God that we have in the Spirit. This is where the wisdom of God comes, is by connecting with the, the Holy Spirit of God. And that's, you know, Paul describes this as the mind of Christ. We connect with with God so powerfully that Paul would say, we have the mind of Christ. We have a connection with God so powerful through the Spirit that we can discern things that, that we just otherwise can't. So this is praying in the Spirit, is connecting with God spiritually in really, really amazing ways. As uh, We've been going through this series. Someone asked me, is praying in the Spirit the same as speaking in tongues? And I would say this. Of course, you see uh, different 1 Corinthians go to chapter 14 if you want to read more about speaking in tongues and praying in the Spirit, singing in the Spirit, that sort of thing. So 1 Corinthians 14. I would say that, uh, that praying in tongues is praying in the Spirit, but you can pray in the Spirit without uh, without speaking in tongues, you can speak regular language and pray in the Spirit also. So that's maybe a piece of it, but praying in the Spirit is really talking about the connection we have with God. So here's how I'm going to define praying in the Spirit. It's my definition, uh, two parts to it. Prayers, praying in the Spirit, are it's about prayers that make a spiritual connection with God and that have spiritual power to affect things. So when you pray in the Spirit, you're actually connecting with God. You're not just sort of like trying to send some prayers out, you know, like putting a letter in the mail, but it's, it's part of a connection with God and there's power. So uh, again, praying in the Spirit, my definition, prayers that make a spiritual connection with God and that have spiritual power to affect things. So that is praying in the Spirit. You know, um, we talked about back in James uh, 16 through 18, we talked about, you know, the, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much would be the King James. Uh, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is about connecting with God and having power in the spirit. So that's praying in the spirit. So how do we pray in the spirit? How do we do that? Uh, this is a very important question. If we're told to pray in the Spirit, uh, you know, with all kinds of prayers and requests and pray for all the Lord's people, how do we do that? Uh, I think uh, it's really important to understand how to do that. I'm going to give you my best shot, and then we're going to consult a very important expert. So I'll give you my take on this. I've got a couple things to say before I give you kind of a five-part way of praying in the Spirit. Uh, first one prerequisite is submit yourself to God. You know, we talked about that a few weeks back. You've got to submit yourself to God. You can't pray in the Spirit until you've submitted your life to Christ. You've come under the Lordship of Christ. You've asked God for forgiveness and you've pledged your life to walk with Him, uh, to serve Him, to be obedient to the ways of God, to do your part, to be an active participant in the kingdom of God. So, if you haven't done that yet, do that now. Uh, stop what you're doing, and if this is your moment to turn your life over to Christ, stop and do it. If you're in your living room, just kneel down, pray to the Lord, ask for forgiveness, and pledge your life to walk with Him. That's what you need to do. 
He will forgive your sins, bring you into the family of God and help you learn his ways so that you can walk with him. And if you do that, I want you to shoot me an email because uh, I would love to know. So shoot me an email, pastormike at goodhope.ag. It's my direct email. It'll come straight to me. So if you have made a decision to follow Christ, I want to know. Shoot me an email, pastormike at goodhope.ag. So prerequisite to praying in the Spirit is submitting your life to Christ. Next thing is a disclaimer. Um, I'm going to give you five steps. I didn't consciously follow these five steps in my prayer journey and connecting with God through prayer. Uh, I'm just given some guidelines. If you get it, if you get praying in the Spirit, then just go for it. You, know, you, don't, you don't have to follow these five steps exactly. Uh, it's just something I, I think maybe will be helpful for some people. So this is my best shot at helping people learn, helping you learn how to pray in the Spirit. So here we go, five, five steps. Step number one, believe that you can. Believe that you actually can pray in the Spirit. If you don't think that you can, it's not going to work. Uh, People are intimidated by praying. Um, I I started my Christian life by praying. It's it's how it began. Um, Just me, me and God, me by myself, you know, driving down the road, uh, praying a prayer, connecting with God. That's how my relationship with God started. But so many people actually are intimidated by praying. They, they're afraid to pray out loud. It's just something that's very difficult. Uh, and in fact, that's why we instituted the one-minute blessing time in church. Uh, we didn't start that way when we uh, launched the church 10 years ago, just about 10 years ago. Uh, we didn't have a one-minute blessing time. But then, as I got to know uh, the needs of the people in the congregation, I found out that we had scores of people who hadn't prayed out loud in their life. They didn't know how to do it. They were scared to do it. Uh, So I thought, oh, what am I supposed to do with that? Uh, You know, teach on prayer for sure. But I thought, well, let's every service, let's just give an example. Let's just give an example of a simple prayer for a simple topic. And that will help people see what it's like to just pray. But the first thing you need to do is to believe that you can Don't be afraid to pray. Don't be intimidated by it. God calls us to do it. Uh, You don't need to be superhuman or anything like that. Just be a regular person and you can pray. But believe that you can pray in the Spirit. If you've submitted your life to Christ, you can pray in the Spirit. It's not a complicated, crazy thing. So step one, believe that you can. Step two, be aware of God's presence. Be conscious of God's presence. God knows everything. He's all-knowing. You know, there's certain attributes of God that, uh, that we believe to be true. And one of those is that God knows everything. Uh, it's universally accepted truth in Christianity that God knows everything. So if he knows everything, he knows that you're praying at that moment. He knows what you're praying He knows your heart in the midst of it. He knows what you're worried about. He knows what brought you to prayer. He knows exactly what's going on. So just be aware of that. You have the attention of Almighty God. He knows what you're doing. So essentially, He is there with you. So be conscious of that. Be aware of the presence of God. Focus on that. Uh, I think it's helpful to picture going before the throne of God when you pray. I think that's very helpful. Be conscious of the presence of God, the awareness of God. Sometimes you feel very distant from God. I've heard people describe that, you know, it's like my prayers hit the ceiling and bounce back. Well, they don't. Uh, God is aware. He knows everything. He knows exactly what's happening right there. Maybe you're not feeling it, but be aware. cultivate an awareness of the presence of God and knowing that God sees what's happening. So uh, step two is be aware of God's presence. He sees you praying. He knows your heart. He knows the whole situation. So be aware of that. Acknowledge the presence of God when you pray. 
Part three, step three. So we've believed that you can be aware of God's presence. Part three, open yourself up completely. Open yourself up to God. Um, no pretense. You know, when you pray, you don't have to pray just right. You know, uh, you don't have to impress God with how fancy you pray and, and all those sorts of things. I've prayed some horrible, terrible prayers that, you know, very poorly constructed uh, and, and doesn't matter. Uh, it's about our heart connecting with God. So no pretense. Um, open yourself up to God. No pretense. Also, it's important to overcome self-consciousness. Some people are so self-aware that it's a hindrance to prayer. They're, they're rethinking everything they're doing and just let her flow. Just let it go. Um, open yourself up to God. I want to read from 1 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, there's an important point that I want to make from 1 Timothy chapter 2, and that is that there is no no mediator between God and man but Christ Jesus. So we can go directly to God and open yourself up directly to God. So 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 6 says this, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Again, call to prayer. For kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. So Jesus, the one who gave himself as a ransom for all people, the one mediator between God and man. So Jesus, you know, God the Son, uh, he is the mediator, so we can go directly to the Lord. So let's open ourselves up completely to God, because it can be just us and God. We can't put our, our pretense in front. If we have self-consciousness, that's a bummer. But we can't put our facade up and connect with God through our facade. Just open up your heart. He sees into the depth of who you are anyway. Open yourself up to God. Try your best to have nothing between you and Jesus. Not fear, not, uh, you know, uh, any, any self-consciousness, pretense, trying to prove yourself, none of that stuff. Try to have nothing between you and the Lord. Just open yourself up completely to God. Then part four, ask God to guide you through the Holy Spirit as you pray. So, If we're going to pray in the Spirit, that can't be us doing it on our own. We have to be in the Spirit to pray in the Spirit. So we need to connect with the Holy Spirit of God. So ask God to guide you through the Holy Spirit when you pray. Uh, So let's ask. Luke 11, 11 through 13 says this. Let's go to Luke 11, 11 through 13 says, Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So this is Jesus teaching. He's talking about us asking God for the Holy Spirit. And so we can ask. He's not going to give us something bad. Some people are afraid that if they ask for, you know, something spiritual to connect with them, that, that somehow that, you know, something evil can sneak in there. Well, ask the Lord. Stay connected with the Lord. Ask him for the Spirit. You're going to be fine. Um, Jesus says he's not going to give you a scorpion. He's not going to give you something bad. God will give you something good. He'll give you the Spirit if you ask. So, Ask God to guide you through the Spirit. Don't merely pray in emotion or in your understanding. Pray in the Spirit. So you can pray in the Spirit and it can be an emotional experience. But if you're praying in emotion, that's a different thing. You can pray in the Spirit and understand what's going on. But if you're praying merely in your understanding, that's a different thing. 
So I hope you're catching what I'm saying there. You want to pray in the Spirit. Ask God to guide you by the Spirit. That can be an emotional experience. It can be an experience where you're aware of what's going on and have an understanding of what's happening. But if you're uh, but sometimes people think they're praying in the Spirit, but they're just all caught up in emotion. They think they're praying in the Spirit, but they're just in their own understanding. So you can have emotion and understanding, but the key to praying in the Spirit is being in the Spirit, connecting with the Holy Spirit of God, letting the Spirit of God guide you as you pray, being, being Spirit-led. So that's the first four. Believe that you can pray in the Spirit, um, be aware of the presence of God. Open yourself up completely. Ask God to guide you through the Holy Spirit as you pray. And then uh, the last part, part five, then just go for it. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be uh, this amazing thing. You'll learn as you go. Just go ahead and pray. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be a big deal. Just go ahead and do it. So Ephesians six eighteen again. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Just go for it. Just go ahead and pray. It, it doesn't have to be super fancy. Just go ahead and have at her. So how do we pray in the Spirit? Here's my best shot. Five steps. Believe you can. Be aware of God's presence while you pray. Open yourself up to God completely. Ask God to guide you through the Holy Spirit, and then just go for it. Just have at it. That's how we pray in the Spirit. That's my best shot. I told you that we would consult a real expert, and so the good news is Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. So let's go to Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to look at the account from the Sermon on the Mount of Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. So Matthew 6, starting in verse 5, says this, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So this, uh, you may have recognized what we just read. This is the, the 2011 NIV, so, uh, but it's the Lord's Prayer. You know, maybe the wording isn't exactly how, how you're familiar with it, but the Lord's Prayer here in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray, and he teaches them by giving them the Lord's Prayer. So I got to believe that if we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're praying in the Spirit. We're praying how Jesus told us to pray. So there, there's got to be some power in that. And we see some overlaps with the things that I mentioned, you know, uh, don't, no pretense, you know, don't pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. Don't try to be fancy. Uh, so no pretense. Um, you've got, you know, be aware of God, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen, have an awareness of God. You know, it's not about impressing people. It's about connecting with God. And then uh, don't keep on babbling. You know, that's something I heard a preacher one time say it this way. He said, how long do you have to pray to earn a healing? Of course, the answer is you can't earn a healing. So you can't just pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and just try to wear down God. We pray and then we trust God. We set before the Lord what we need, what's on our heart, what we see as something important. We set that before the Lord. And you can pray more than once on the same thing. 
But then when we set it at the feet of the Lord, we go forward with our lives, walking in the peace of God and trusting the Lord. So we don't have to just keep praying over and over and over and over and over. Um, Trust the Lord. And then the Lord's Prayer. And let me just break that down uh, by concept. So, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Start prayer by honoring God. Honoring Almighty God. That's how Jesus taught his disciples to pray, was to begin by honoring God. And then the next piece is submitting to the will of God. Thy will be done. Not my will be done. You know, I can go and I can, I can present a request to God. But just like the Lord did in the Garden of Gethsemane, he asked for the cup to be taken away from him, but said, but not my will, your will be done. It's the same for us. We submit to the will of God. So as we pray, we want to honor God. We want to submit to the will of God. Then we see Jesus teaching his disciples to pray for simple daily provision. Give us this day our daily bread. It's fine to pray for the simple everyday things. Sometimes people feel like, well, I don't want to bother God with something insignificant. Jesus taught his disciples to pray for bread for each day to have something to eat. Uh, God wants to be involved in your life in the simple, normal, everyday parts of life. Pray about that stuff. Give us this day our daily bread. Then there's the praying for forgiveness. You know, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors, as we forgive those uh, who have trespassed against us. So we're praying for forgiveness, to receive forgiveness, but then there's an acknowledgement that if we're going to receive forgiveness, we must offer forgiveness as well. Then Jesus teaches his disciples to pray for guidance and for deliverance. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So we see a very powerful, powerful uh, template for prayer there. Now, with the Lord's Prayer, is this a checkbox kind of prayer? Uh, you know, or is it a powerful praying in the Spirit kind of prayer? Because here's, here's my take on it. I think it can go either way. If you're praying the Lord's Prayer and you're thinking about something else, you're not praying in the Spirit. <laughs> you're just... Uh, going through a ritual, uh, and it's not meaningful. But if you're praying the Lord's Prayer, it is powerful, and you're connecting with it, and then you can absolutely be praying in the Spirit, praying the Lord's Prayer, uh, just as is. Um, I, years ago, I was talking to a pastor, um, you know, and, and we're an Assembly of God church, and we tend to just pray, you know, we just Go ahead and pray, you know. And and this pastor I was talking to, uh, who was a Lutheran pastor, said he spent just as much time developing the prayers for the church service as he did the sermon. And I was shocked because, I mean, we don't write down the prayers. We just, I I put a spot in the notes where it says pray. (laughs) We just pray. Uh, I was shocked. And so we were talking about that for a while. And what he said to me was, well, you know, I want to, pray the right things. So I want to pray over the prayers and, and craft them well and honor God through how the prayers are constructed. And I thought, well, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I can honor that. I'm not going to start doing that. I'm still going to just pray. But it showed me there's multiple different ways to pray in the Spirit. Um, if you're praying the Lord's Prayer with a group of people and you're all saying the same thing, you can be praying in the Spirit. But if you're thinking of something else and you're just going through the motions, then you're not. So it's really about connecting with God, praying in the Spirit, believing your prayer to be effective and powerful. So we're going to close up uh, this, this series and this sermon. It's the first weekend of the month. Uh, we receive communion together on the first weekend of the month. And of course, we're not able to be together. So I want to encourage you to take communion yourself, to go ahead and receive, uh, receive communion. Honor God. Uh, remember what the Lord Jesus has done for you. You know, the, the bread signifies the body of Christ broken for our healing so we can trust God to, 
to heal us and then the blood of Christ shed for our forgiveness. So we see in the atonement, the healing of God and the forgiveness of God. You don't need to be uh, here in church to receive communion. Of course, it's good to do that. But there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And so you can go before the Lord and receive holy communion yourself. So I encourage you to do that. Right now, I'm going to close in prayer. And I want to pray uh, our style of the Lord's Prayer where we go through the different pieces of it, but not necessarily using the same words each time. So I want to pray for you uh, as we do this, and I encourage you to pray for me. Um, I just love that, that uh, Ephesians 6 finishes with Paul asking them to pray for him, and I ask you to pray for me. Um, so let me pray for you. And I encourage you to pray for me while this is happening. So, holy God, you are awesome and wonderful. We give you praise. We honor you. Lord, we know you've got a great plan. And we ask you to bring your plan forth. Help us to see what your plan is so that we don't try to go a different direction. But Lord, we want to walk in your ways. Father, I pray you would provide for our needs, for those who are are watching, who are listening. Lord, they, this is a, a trying time, a difficult time for many. So Father, uh, we ask you for provision. We ask you for uh, that you would meet our needs and that we can trust in you, not to worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, all those different things, but just trust in you. And Father, forgive us. Lord, when we fail you, when we walk away from what you call us to do, Lord, forgive us. When we hurt others, forgive us. And Lord, we forgive those who have done wrong to us, those who are uh, in our eyes off and doing the wrong things. Lord, we offer forgiveness. And Father, we ask you to guide us. Lord, don't take us to places where we're going to stumble and we're going to fall. But Lord, guide us into those still waters, into those green pastures. Lord, guide us and deliver us from darkness. Father, we've been talking about uh, fighting the spiritual battle, and Lord, deliver us from evil, from the evil one, because Lord, you are powerful, you are glorious, you are mighty, and you can do that. So I ask you to do that for each one that's watching. Bless us and encourage us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, if you have a personal prayer need, I encourage you to go to prayer at goodhope.ag, shoot an email to the prayer team. They will pray for you. But uh, I just want to say thank you. I'm glad you were here. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, again, don't forget to make a comment. That means a lot to me. I can can hear from you. And if you thought this was uh, worth connecting with, this service, then share it on social media, the different ways that you do that. Please share this content. It'd be really, really awesome. So God bless you from all of us here at Good Hope.